Right now, I'm standing outside the United Nations building and there's many flags and there's massive chair behind me. This is called the broken chair. And what it embodies is a desperate but proud outcry by civilian citizens against armed violence. So whenever diplomats or politicians come here, they'll look at this chair and it will remind them of what their duty is and why they're here today. The reason why I'm here today is that today in 2024, 6 Mark, the Sikh genocide that took place 40 years ago in 1984 at Sidi Haramandir Sahib, known in the West as the Golden Temple, where the Indian government, along with its army, came and attacked our most holiest shrine, killing thousands upon thousands of innocent people. Until this day, there has been no justice. My request to the United Nations is that stand true to what this chair represents and to continue to investigate this and bring those people that did wrong to justice. As a Sikh of the Guru, the highest seat for us is Sidi Guru Granth Sahib Ji. And for that reason, what I wanted to do was give the Sikh lens on this chair. Bhai Gurdashi speaks about a very similar type of analogy and how Taram has four legs as well. Chare pair Taram de, Chad Varn ek Varn karaya. In this age of Kalju that we're in right now, Taram only stands on one leg. So this has three legs, but Taram is standing on one leg and it's crying out. Papi Gurdashi pirthmi, Taul kara, Tare hate pakara. The whole world is crying out. Tarim is crying out because it stands on one leg and it cannot handle the weight of this world and all the sin and all the lies. Guru Nanak Jimaraji came to this world. Suni Pukar Da Tar Prabha Guru Nanak Jag Mahe Pathaya. The aim of the Khalsa Pant is to bring us back to this age of truth. Nanak Raja Chalaya, such a Kota Satani Neva there, that Guru Nanak built this Raj upon the foundations of truth. That is just explaining the chair through a sick lens. And what I wanted to do is pull up a quote by somebody named Bibi Bimal Kaur. Every day we say the same thing, that against the oppression of the state and for the struggle to liberate Punjab, it is necessary for the Sikh Panth and our Punjabi siblings to unite and fight. All these flags here today show how these nations are united. And as a Sikh, we all unite under one Nishan Sahib. At this time, remember June 1984. As a Panth, we need to start working together. To learn more, check out our brand new podcast series on BOS TV. If we unite together, eradicate Jude and get rid of injustice, then Raj Gregar Khalsa and people won't have to need to come to this building here, they'll come to the Guru's home where they take Pate, they'll have food protection and that'll be the true victory that the Khalsa Panth has come to bestow upon this world. So please give any mistakes made in this video. Vahi Guru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vahi Guru Ji Ki Fateh. So this is the key of our Ardaans being listened to by Guru Sahib. The key is that we must have 100% faith when we do an Ardaas. That Guruji, please protect me or Guruji, please help me get this done. Oh, I'm in trouble. I know you're there listening to me. And then you leave everything in Guru's hand. You do not think like, okay, I've done an Ardaas, but what if? And when, you, when we have buts and what ifs, you know, I don't know, this kind of like statements or thoughts, then we already bring in doubt. Uh, into our mind and then how can doubt and faith be in the same place <laughs> Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh Sangha Ji. Welcome to another episode of Sikhandi Pagat Mala. And in this episode, we are going to be doing something different. So instead of going through every Sakhi for a separate video, we are going to be exploring the whole body of uh, the Var and we are going to be sharing all the Sakhyan that have been mentioned in that body. So Sikhandi Pagat Mala is basically a, a pothi, a grant written by Shaheed Pai Mani Singh Ji and it explores the stories of Guru Sikhs from the time of Guru Sahib as mentioned by Pai Gurdas Ji in Diyawara. And this Sakya have been told by Guru Gobind Singh Ji themselves to Shaheed Pai Mani Singh Ji and the Sikh Sangat as well and they have been documented. So in uh, today's uh, episode, we are going to be looking at the Sikh of uh, Guru Arjan Dev Ji, all those Sikh Sangat who came to Guru Arjan Dev Ji in body number 18. So the first Sakhi based on the first body of Pai Gurdas's Var 11 body number 18 is Puriya Chuhar Chaudhari Pera Dargeh Data Para. 
So this is the sake of Pai Puriya Ji and Pai Chuhar Ji and the lesson that we can get from this is how can we stop lying? So you know on a daily basis sometimes we can't help but we have to lie if you're doing a business or you know school college or anything and this is a very good lesson for us so pai puri and pai uh, chuhar ji pai chuhar chaudhri they came to guru arjan dev ji and they are basically revenue collectors and they said to guru sahib that uh, you know guru ji we lie to people throughout the day because we are revenue collectors how can we be saved because lying of course is is a sin So Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj then gave a very practical uh, step for them to take that Guru Sahib say that if you stop lying then this will help you to be saved from the cycle of coming and going because you're not creating karam and it's difficult for us to stop lying just like that right so it has to be a step by step process and consistency is key so Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj says build a taramsala so you want to call it gurdwara in your town and have guru granth sahib ji's prakash so suru prakash of gurbani guru granth sahib ji in the taramsala and what's going to happen is that every day you have to make a point to go and have darshan of guru granth sahib ji and listen to katha for four to five kadiya so one kadi is about 24 minutes so if you do the math it's about one and a half hours to two hours dedicated time to listen to katha why katha we're going to listen to the sakya of the importance of katha at the end of this body So then Guru Sahib says okay you go to the gurdwara you have darshan guru granth sahib ji and listen to katha and kirtan and you go about your normal day routine your job your daily life whatever you're doing when you come home before you sleep you have to make it a practice to write down all the lies that you told throughout the day take a piece of paper sit down and write down all the lies be sincere to yourself be honest to yourself after a month collect all the pieces of paper you know that you have written throughout the whole month with all your truths and all your lies and go to the taramsala go to the gurdwara in front of guru granth sahib ji maharaj and the sikh sangat reveal all the lies that you told so read out the piece of paper today i lied to someone i was supposed to get this much of money but because of my selfish reasons i asked for more in this and that read out your lies now it takes a lot of guts to do this right but only when we are aware and we acknowledge the mistakes that we do then we can bring about change in our life so guru arjan dev ji then say every month go to the gurdwara and from guru granth sahib ji maharaj and the sangat be honest and tell all the lies that you told what are you going to feel is you're going to immediately feel the sense of like ashamed why am i doing this how can i even face my guru and the sangat because sangat is guru roop as well and then sometimes you might even have that have that guilt when you recall all the lies that you told that could have hurt someone so guru arjan dev ji maharaj then says as you do sat sangat daily you have darshan guru sahib every day and you read qurbani you listen to katha kirtan you will start to start to develop pa means fear not that dara for the world but the positive fear towards guru sahib that my guru is watching me and listening to me and you will then refrain from telling lies so as you read out your truth and your lies to guru granth sahib ji you will feel ashamed of your action and of your lies and then within 6 months so guru arjan dev ji says so within 6 months your habit of lying will be gone and you will start to become righteous in your actions your thoughts and your words so pai puriya and pai chuhar chaudhri they took up this advice and they started practicing it daily in their life and true enough i think sangha ji if we adapt this as well it will work for us so the next sakhi is about practicing what you preach so this is something that even i need to focus on and and especially listen to the sakhi so pai gurdas ji says bala kisna chingran pandit rai sabha sigar so is a sakhi of two gursik here pai bala and pai kisna ji from the chirangan uh, clan they are basically pandits and so they do kathas in uh, the king's darbar you know so the king calls them and they do katha there so they came to guru jindi ji maharaj and say guru ji we have basically attained the knowledge of all the khat shastras so the six shastras uh, 18 puranas the vedas all the granth there is we know the knowledge of it and we can preach and teach others but why is it that when we do katha or when we feel uh, when we you know teach the sangat and and share this gyan with them why is it that we don't feel peace uh, within ourselves 
it should be that because we have the gyan of the shastras the vedas we should be experiencing what they are, what they are actually telling us but why is it not happening so then guru sahib says that as you preach and speak about the knowledge and the wisdom of the vedas of the shastras of the people you have to do that to your own mind as well so when you're telling someone uh, you know this is what gurbani says hana huh, that um, be kind be honest uh, do not lie to anyone you know do naam simran do seva do sangat you you are also speaking to yourself at the same time and telling your mind so as you preach to other people you're preaching to yourself as well so when we are doing katha or kirtan we must not have that mindset that i already know it that's why i'm telling you it must be hey this is what our guru is telling us to do so we are going to learn it together and practice it together so this way then you'll be liberated and your mind will be at peace so guru ajan dev ji is advised by bala and pai kisna ji to get upon themselves and as they do katha in the king's darbar they also do katha to themselves as well as they are speaking it's like as if they are speaking to their own mind more rather than speaking to the people sitting there so in the third sakhi the third uh, pankti pai gurdas ji then shares the sakhi of a gursik called pai trilokka ji so the pankti is suhad tilokka surma sikh samunda sanmukh sara So there's this two gursiks here mentioned by Tilokka ji and by Samunda ji. So what's the sakhi of by Tilokka ji? Okay, so this is a very interesting one. By Tilokka ji is basically an employee of the Mughal Empire. So he's basically a soldier. So by Tilokka ji from the Suhar clan, he came to Guru Arjan Dev ji Maharaj one day and said that Guru Sahib, look, I'm an employee of the Mughal Empire, which means I'm a soldier and my job is to fight battles and kill the enemy as told by my general but because i'm killing people how can i be saved from this world because killing someone cruelty is a sin right and guru sahib says that one of the the limb of dharm is ahimsa so this is a this is a pankti that comes in sar katavli granth and it it are the, it tells us the 10 limbs of a dharmic person a righteous person and one of that 10 limbs is ahimsa non cruelty right so then guru arjan dev ji maharaj spoke to pai tilokka ji and says look it is your dharm it is your job your worldly job to do what a soldier does which is fight um, you know and destroy your enemy but within your mind and your heart basically we are speaking about intention here do not have any cruel thoughts towards someone So you are not killing someone because you want to or you have the desire or the itcha that I want to kill this person. You are just doing your job because this is what your job requires you to do. But within your heart your intentions must be pure. So Pati Loka ji then says sat bachan and then he goes on his own way. And one day Pati Loka ji went to the jungle and he's riding on a horse and he sees a deer. So he what he did was then he raised his horse towards that deer and he had a sword in his hand and he cut basically chopped the deer and killed it. When he came down what he saw next shocked him. The deer was pregnant and the unborn child basically the fetus because he slit the stomach um open with his sword the unborn child came out from the deer's the mother deer's a uh, womb. which means both mother and child died so pai tilokka ji then he became very afraid and very upset because he went against the bachan of guru arjan dev ji which is to not kill someone intentionally and do not have the desire or the itcha to hurt someone to kill someone or oh an animal anything so what he did was he looked at his his sword and he said ki ede karke it is because of this sword in my hand that i end up um doing cruel actions cruel things so what he did was he broke off the blade the iron blade of his uh, if of his sword and he changed it to a timber blade so a wood blade but he kept the motta the handle as iron and then the blade is made of wood which means you can't really hurt anyone with it so then he put it back into the sheath so from the outside people could see that oh it's it's a sword right because the the handle the more ties of iron but only if he takes it out then only you can see that the blade is actually of wood and not of iron 
so paitloka ji being a soldier uh, in the mughal empire the army he was very much liked by the general and there were many people who were jealous of him and he used to get one of the reason why people were jealous of him was he used to get 5 rupees per day as his salary which is a very big amount and so some people uh, found out that paitloka ji changed the the blade of his sword into a wooden blade and they went and complained to the general and said look you pay him so much you have so much of faith in him you trust him so much but then he carries around a wooden blade how is he going to uh, kill any enemy how is he going to work for you uh, or get anything done so the general then demanded paitloka ji to show his his uh, sword and paitloka ji at that point of course you have your guru sahib bachan that you have to follow and then you have your worldly boss um who is demanding you to show and at that point pai tiloka ji then closes his eyes and does an ardas guru arjan dev ji mar ke sache paasha hon meri meri laaj rakho protect my honor all i'm doing is following your bachan so he was very fearless because he has done his ardas and he has full faith so this is the key of our ardas being listened to by guru sahib the key is that we must have 100% faith when we do an ardas that guru ji please protect me or guru ji please help me get this done oh i'm in trouble i know you're there listening to me and then you leave everything in guru's hand you do not think like okay i've done an ardas but what if and when you when we have buts and what ifs you know i don't know this kind of like statements or thoughts then we already bring in doubt uh, into our mind and then how can doubt and faith be in the same place so pai tiloka ji did an ardas and he was fearless he took out his uh, his sword his mian uh, from the mian and everybody was shocked to see that the blade was indeed one of the best iron damascus blade that someone could actually have um um uh, in their possession those who gossiped about him they were shocked and the general was very much pleased with pai tiloka ji so what pai tiloka ji did with his 5 uh, rupees salary So uh, Shahid Pai Mani Singh ji tells that out of the 5 rupees 1.25 rupees he would give to Guru Kar so he just uh, chada about to Guru Guru Arjan Dev ji Maharaj and to the Guru Kar for the seva of uh, for Guru Sahib and the Gurdwara 1.25 rupees was spent on the poor so he used to do charity give them food kapde anything that they need and the balance 2.5 rupees were used to feed langar to his fellow soldiers who perhaps didn't get as much salary as he did and also to the other six sangat as well and this way sangat ji despite doing a job that pai tiloka ji did not really enjoy but he had no choice you see sometimes even when we work as as a doctor for example or or policeman or something like any any job that, there's always the pros and cons of it but if we have good intentions while we are doing it and we do our das to guru sahib and we find ways to return back to the community uh if we feel that we haven't done enough like how party loka ji did then of course guru sahib will always be on our side so now the sakhi of pai samund ji so the same pankti suhar tiloka surma sik samunda sanmukh sara so the sakhi of pai samund ji is who are the blessed sik So Pai Samunda ji was a Sikh of Guru Arjan Dev ji and one day he came to Guru Sahib and he said Guru ji I want to ask this question who is a Sanmukh Sikh and who is a Bemukh Sikh So in our previous videos we also have spoken about this as well So Guru Arjan Dev ji Maharaj says well someone when a person is given a task to do and they do it well they do it properly they are called a Sanmukh Sikh and a person who is given a task to do but doesn't do it well in fact causes more damage than that person can never be a sanmukh sikh then guru sahib then continues to give other characteristics of a sanmukh sikh sanmukh means someone who has their mukh their face facing the guru which means following the teachings of the guru so a person who wakes up at amrit amrit vela takes and does their ishnan takes a bath remembers vai guru through simran does charity pun daan those people are sanmukh sikh so guru ramdas ji also they have said before ki gur sat gur ka jo sikh akhai so palke uth har naam de uddam kare palke parbati isnan kare amrit sar nave fir chade divas gurbani gaave behde uthde har naam de 
so that whole shabad speaks about the characteristics of a sanmukh sikh and then a baymukh sikh is someone who have spent their whole life in the panjchor in lust in anger in greed in pride you know in in ego and have never followed the teachings of the guru so then pai samund ji then says ki sachche paacha please bless me so that i can become a sanmukh sikh as well and guru arjan ji maharaj says that look ek kripa de naal hundi hai it is only through guru's kripa that we become sanmukh and then when we are sanmukh which means we have our face facing the guru and we can always have darshan of guru sahib ek kripa de naal hundi hai but to get guru's kripa as a sikh we must be putting in effort as well we must be doing our ardasa as well do you know like pai samund ji he asked what effort can i put in wake up at amrit vela do your ishnan do simran do charity do good you know when you're given something to do you do it well then after that pai samund ji does what he does an ardas ki sachche paasha make me a sanmukh sikh and then that formula you add it up together equals to getting the kripa from guru sahib so the next pankti is on um, the three types of gurmukhs and manmukhs so is a very similar concept here as well so the pankti is kulla pulla chanjiya pagirath soini sachyara So this is Sakhi of three Guru Sikhs, Pai Kulla, Pai Pulla, and Pai Pagirachi. They came to a uh, Guru Arjan Dev Ji Mara, and they have a very simple question. They say we are going through so much of pain because we are going in and out of the cycle of life and death, the cycle of reincarnation. What can we do? Please bless us, give us a sikhya that we can cut this cycle, break the cycle, and we don't have to come back into this in reincarnation again. So then Guru Sahib says, well, you should do the actions. Uh, the deeds commit the deeds and do such actions of a gurmukh and forsake the actions the uh, the habits of a manmukh then they ask ki guru sahib who is a gurmukh and who is a manmukh now here is where guru arjan dev ji maharaj then continues and and shares about the three gurmukhs three types of gurmukhs and three types of manmukhs under gurmukhs and manmukhs so the three categories are gurmukh gurmukhtar and gurmukhtam and then the manmukhs are also the same manmukh manmukhtar and manmukhtam so who is a gurmukh very briefly someone who follows the teachings of guru sahib and you know forsake their bad intellect their mari mari buddhi you know and if someone does good to them the gursik also does good to them as well so it's like you do good to me i do good to you and they always appreciate the kind of kindness of other people and they don't forget the kindness Gurmukhtar are those who have let go of their bad habits, uh, their their bad actions, and they they have taken on good actions and good habits, and they even they help people whether they get anything in return or not. It's not like a barter system, but it's more like I want to do good um, to everybody. And uh, Gurmukhtam are basically scholars. They do good to everyone, irregardless whether people are people do bad to them. or people do good to them or people don't even do anything for them gurmukhtams they are like we want to help everybody the whole humanity even if someone says anything bad or good to them they always respond in good then manmukh are those who always indulge in like bad actions bad words and bad thoughts do not follow the teachings of the guru sahib if someone does good to them they'll forget it and if someone does bad towards them they will never forget the bad so they forget the good but they never forget the bad then manmukhtar are those who only does bad to everyone irregardless regardless whether you know people do good to them or people do bad to them they just respond in bad actions bad words towards them and manmukhtam are those who do bad to people who help them and who do good to them they just respond in in just being mean towards them and if someone tries to help them they respond in in um, in mean ways as well they say that there's no benefit in listening to shabad in listening to guru's bachan and doing good it doesn't help them in any way and these are the people guru sahib says they will suffer in hell so guru sahib says to seek gurmukh bano go being a gurmukh means you don't see what the next person is good or bad your intention must be pure and your your job must be to always do good towards other people and be it they are good to you or they are bad to you so in the next pankti then pai gurdas ji says lalu balu vajhan har khwant har das pyara so four gur six mention here pai lalu ji pai balu ji pai har das ji and pai pyara ji 
and so their question is the sikha that we get from here is four daily practices that we must do as a sikha so they came to guru arjan dev ji maharaj and of course their question every guru sikh will ask this question look the way that we can be safe from this world is different our destination is the same but the journey is always different so they ask a question that how can we be saved guru sahib and guru sahib says well when you meet someone always meet them with a smile you know sometimes when you see people they are like sare butthe like this like mm-hmm. i'm in a bad mood and i'm going to show it on my face you know so guru sahib says always meet others with a smile and speak sweetly we never know what the other person is going through and we never know what impression they might have of of us if we meet people with like you know sare butthe and like a uh, like or sometimes you put on that that face like you know that layer that oh i'm an amritari or i have a certain status so i cannot mingle with you and guru sahib says Rem- remove all of that and meet everyone with a smile and speak sweetly share with other people and always be humble so four teachings S- meeting people with a smile and you know if you meet someone this with a smile they might be having a bad day but you smile at them and you acknowledge them and they feel just so much better right and then second is to speak sweetly mitha bolna so we spoke about it, the 10 limbs of taram one is mitha bolna as well okay so then sharing with others so apna dasvand kadna and then wand ke shakna and always be humble be humble even though you have everything you have nothing you know being humble in in all situation so in the next pankti um by gurdas ji then speaks by another four gurusikhs who come to guru arjan dev ji maharaj and their names are pai nihalu ji pai tulsiya pai bulna ji and pai pai chandiya ji so the pankti is teer nihalu tulsiya bula chandiya bahut guniyara so these four gurusikhs they came to guru arjan dev ji maharaj and they have this doubt which they want to clear about guru nanak dev ji so they said guru sahib You know we have heard so many different versions of Guru Nanak Dev Ji's history. Some say that Guru Nanak Dev Ji is the reincarnation of a follower of Raja Janak. So which one is is true um Guru Sahib Ji or are both not true? Can you please help us to remove our doubt and make us have faith towards Guru Nanak Dev Ji because you are sitting on the throne of Guru Nanak Dev Ji and we want to have that faith towards Guru Sahib. So Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj then says look Sangat Ji Guru Nanak Dev Ji is the form of Parmatma himself right so aap narayan kala ta jag mein parvaryo okay so aap narayan parmatma himself came into this world and took the form of Guru Nanak Dev Ji so Guru Arjan Dev Ji then says that all the three deities na the Brahma Vishnu Shiva and all the 33 crore devi devte they also sing the praises of guru nanak dev ji they also bow down to guru nanak dev ji when guru nanak dev ji took avatar in this world everybody all the gods the goddesses titti crore devi devte were showering flowers and sandalwood on the house of guru nanak dev ji because they have taken um, avatar so these people these uh, devi devte they also praise guru nanak dev ji and but yet they cannot find parmatma right they cannot find guru nanak dev ji they cannot find the end of guru nanak dev ji ha na and so sikh so guru nanak dev ji came guru arjan dev ji then says that guru nanak dev ji came into this world to bless us the gyan so tur ki bani aaye tin sagli chint mitai to bless us the gyan of all the spiritual texts in the world in a very simple language and simple you know uh, guidance that we simple minded people can follow and we can also attain liberation as well so guru nanak dev ji wrote bani in simple language and it contains the essence of all the granth all the vedas all the all the shastras in the form of now that we have guru granth sahib ji so guru arjan dev ji mara says you want to build your faith in guru nanak dev ji is to read the bani of guru nanak dev ji and understand what guru sahib is 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 telling you to do so the next one the next pankti connects to this was the question is what do i lose from reading and contemplating on gurbani so the pankti of pai gurdas is the next line is gokhu toda mehtia tota madhu sabd vichara so these four gursikhs they came to guru arjan dev ji and they asked ki hey sachche paatsha ji you know you're the only one who can save us you know you, no one else can save us from this world only you can save us now please tell us what should we do 
and Guru Sahib says, well, all of you together, the four of you should sit down together, become each other's Sangat and read Gurbani and do Vichar, means contemplate on what the meanings of the Gurbani is, what Guru Sahib is telling us to do. And whatever is the teaching of Guru Gurbani, you must accept it and practice it. So, Sarnana, Manana and Nidhyasan Karna. Pahala Sarnana, listening to it. Manana, then accepting it, that this is what my Guru is telling me to do. And then Nidhyasan means to put it into practice. So then whatever Gurbani tells us to leave, means Iddana Karo and so on, you need to leave all of that um, negativity and those bad practices. Then they ask, why should we read Gurbani? What do we get? What is the benefit of reading and, and contemplating on Gurbani? Or what do we lose you know, when we do this? So Guru Sahib says, when you read Gurbani, you are collecting good karam. So you know, when we do Sahaj Paat or when we read Gurbani, we are collecting, collecting good karam. It's a good thing, right? And our mind starts to become pure because we are listening to, to Turki Bani. So mind starts becoming pure. But then Guru Sahib says the next step is if you start reading Gurbani without any desire, so Nishkam Denal, you are reading Gurbani, not for like, oh, message Pataria because I want a new house. So of course you get the blessings for that as well, definitely. Whatever you, you ask for, you shall get. But Guru Sahib says, what do you get if you don't ask for anything? Then Guru Sahib says, if you read Gurbani without any desire for any worldly desire, and only to contemplate the meanings of Gurbani. So you're reading Sukhmani Sahib, you want to know what this Bani is all about. Then you will start to obtain the Gyan, the wisdom, and Gyan, Brahm Gyan, and the cycle of life and death will be broken. You will break the cycle of life and death. So Guru Sahib now gives an analogy. Guru Sahib says, just like in wood, there's, there's the energy of fire in wood, but you can't see it. So, you know, even within this body as well, we have all five elements. The element of fire, the element of wind, you know, air, space, earth, and water, hana. So, in the wood, there's an energy of fire. But without the right technique, you cannot start a fire and burn the wood. So, what do you do is when you rub two things together, you rub like two stones together, two mater um, um, matters together, it will then create the fire. And then the fire... You use it to burn the wood and the wood, what it will do is it will take on the form of the fire. So the wood will no longer remain. All you see is ashes. Right? When you burn the wood, all you see is, is, is that fire, that heat from the wood now comes out. So then Guru Sahib says, similarly, when we rub the stone, the matter of wisdom, of Gyan and Vichar. So there's two keys here, Gyan and Vichar. Then the ego of the body and mind will be destroyed, will be completely burned. And what comes out of it is you will start to realize and acknowledge your true self, which is Atma. You start recognizing what are the qualities of my true self and, and Paramatma. And so in the last Pankti now, it's very similar um, theme. The lesson here is the benefit of listening to Katha and Kirtan. So... Like I mentioned earlier, when Guru Sahib told the Guru Sahib to see Katha Sono, Kirtan Sono. And what's the benefit of it? Why Katha and Kirtan? Why not Katha or Kirtan? Right? So some of us, like even, even in Sikh Taram as well, sometimes we just have people who just prefer to listen to Kirtan and do Kirtan. But when it, times, when it comes uh, for Katha, then they just get up and leave. And, and some are just like, I don't, I'm not into Kirtan. And then if a Samagam happens, then they get up and leave. But in this Pankti, Pai Gurdasi, through the Sakhi, will tell us why both Katha and, Katha and Kirtan are important. So the Pankti is, Chaju ate mukanda hai Kirtan kare hajur ke dara, saad sangata pargat pahara. So the three Gursiks mentioned here, Pai Pai Chanjuji, so here is Chaju, but Pai Chanjuji, Pai Mukandaji, and Pai Kidaraji. And so they are basically Guru Kar the Kirtanis. So they came to Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj and say, Kisachi Pachi Ji, how can we be saved from, from this world? And Guru Sahib say, Well, you have the knowledge of Rag. Rag Vidya Hayagiya. You have got the knowledge of Gurbani, Sangeet, Rag Vidya. And what you should do is you should just do Kirtan. You know, Kirtan Karo. And Kirtan is basically a type of penance. It's a pasya hundiya. And it's a sattvic penance, which means it's a good type of penance where it doesn't increase your ego 
where it doesn't make you create more karam and so on is a very good type of tapasya and is the best tapasya in kaljug so in gurbani is amara says kaljug mein kirtan pardana gurmukh japiye lae tyana so then uh, the guru says ask guru sahib please tell us the benefit of reading gurbani and listening to katha and kirtan and doing katha and kirtan so listening and doing katha kirtan now guru sahib gives an analogy about why katha and kirtan are important so guru sahib says so three analogies here reading gurbani ourselves then when we read gurbani someone else we read it together with someone second is doing kirtan and doing katha so three analogies here so the first one benefit of reading gurbani so let's say we have a field we have a khet and we are a, a farmer so you want to water your your field right you want pani to go into your field so what you do is you dig a well and you create a waterway drain so that the water from the well can be directed to your towards your field so what happens is your field is watered and you you bring back the harvest from your field who enjoys who reap the benefit you yourself this is the benefit of reading gurbani but if you do it with sangat so what is that is when you dig the when you build the drain from the you direct the water from the water source the well into the field and you create neighboring drains as well so the neighboring field they also get the pani so they also get to enjoy uh, the they reap the fruits of listening to gurbani because you did uh, the work as well so that's the benefit of reading gurbani now we have so many fields so if you look at punjab there's so many khet right they're so far far away kilometers kilometers wide because you have dug that well and and you have directed the water source into drains around the field not every field can, can get the pani so you might reap the benefit your neighbors might but what about the humanity what about everyone else so here is where guru sai speaks about kirtan kirtan is like a heavy rain that you know you look you look at you look at the cloud it might be clear but the next thing you know heavy rain so kirtan is like heavy rain that pours on every field right and and what happens is everyone gets to enjoy and reap the benefit of the harvest but what happens is that heavy rain sometimes it doesn't last for long is like that is a booster right and uh, so what is katha then katha is like drizzling rain ha na not heavy but is basically long term uh, rain that drizzles at a very consistent speed or uh, you know so what happens is katha the rain that comes it sips into the ground and it stays there so the water then contains into into the ground and heavy rain water it gushes and it just is basically like it it creates a very instant um like source of water and it pools there and then after that what katha, kirtan does is kirtan creates that love and berag and instantly creates that emotion katha is sahaje dinal it stays in so when we listen to katha it stays within our mind and we start to do vichar of it as we listen to it sometimes that thing might pop up again when we go through our daily life so guru sahib says then those who listen to katha and kirtan and contemplate on gurbani so the three elements are huh? reading and doing vichar of gurbani doing katha listening to katha doing kirtan listening to kirtan when they do these things together they complement each other you can't just be doing one thing and not the other so guru sadan says katha describes a kirtan and kirtan produces love and joy in someone's heart just like a mother is complimented when she based on her, the upbringing of her children right so the mother cares and nurtures the children so guru sahib says the mother is like katha as a very long term process you know slowly slowly and the kirtan is a child which is the result of it right and something that people can see so katha is the mother and kirtan is a child then the gursik asks well if katha is the mother and kirtan is a the child then who is the father then guru sahib can they prem love is the father so without love you can't have you can't be enjoying katha and kirtan you know so all three elements must be together for you to enjoy gurbani and reap the fruits the the benefit you know of of gurbani of listening to katha and kirtan so you must have love 
Only then you will have the desire to listen to Katha and Kirtan. And Katha and Kirtan, like what we mentioned, Kirtan is like heavy rain. Immediate, you get you get results, right? And it can change people's life. You know, you store water for like future uh, use and so on. Katha is like drizzling rain that sips into the ground and sits there for a very long time and use, you use it for a long time. And Gurbani, reading Gurbani, you benefit for yourself. And when you do it in Sangat, you help other people to benefit it as well. So Sangaji, in this body, we see a various uh, theme across the whole body. How do we stop lying? Um, how is it that we have to practice what we preach when we do Katha and Kirtan? How our Guru saves us when we follow the Bachan of Guru Sahib? Who are the Gurmukhs and the Manmukh? What are their characteristics? And also, removing the doubt on Guru Nanak Dev Ji, which is a very important point because even at this age now, a lot of people have doubt on Guru Nanak Dev Ji or even on our Bani. So removing, so even back then during the time of Guru Sahib, people already had doubt, but they went to the Guru to remove their doubt. So we don't go to anyone else as well. We go to Guru Sahib. We go to Guru Sahib to remove our doubt. And then the last was the end is, what do I get and what do I lose if I listen to Katha Kirtan, read Gurbani and do Vichar on Gurbani. So Sangaji, there's a lot to learn from this body. Hope you um, enjoyed listening to the Sakya uh, of this body. And in the next episode, we're going to explore Var 11, body number 19. Pula Chukan Di Kima, Vaheguru Ji Ka Khausa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. Vaheguru <clears throat> Sajjana Satcha Patishahu Sir Sahan Desahu Jis Paas Bhaethe Aansu Hiya Sab Nada Vesahu Jis Paas Bhaethe Aansu सब ना दावे साहो तिचर मूल ना थोड़ी दो जेचरे आप कृपाल सबद अखुट बाबा नान का खाहे खरच तन माल बवे कांदडे जे लहा किन्ना सावी तोल तन जडाई आपने लहा सो सजन टोल सजन सच्चा पात साहो सिर साहा दे साहो जिस पास बैठे आंसो ही है सबना दावे साहो एक ओंकार सतगुरु प्रसाद सलोक महला नावा गुन गोबिंद गायो नहीं जन्म अकार थे कि कहो नानक हर पाज मना जह बिद जल को मीन बिखे अनस्यो काहे रचेओ निमख ना हो हे उदास कहो नानक पाज हर मना पर ना जम की फास तर ना पोयो ही गयो लियो जरा तन जीत कहो नानक पाज हर मना औद जात है बीत 
व्यर्थ पयो सुजैनही काल पहुँचियो आन कहो नानक नर बाबरे क्यों ना पजे भगवान तन दारा संपत सगल जिन अपनी कर मान इन में कछ संगी नहीं नानक साची जान पतत उदारन पैहरन हर अनाथ के नाथ कहो नानक ते जानिए सदा बस्त तुम साथ तन तन जेह तो को दियो तास्यो ने हो ना कीन कहो नानक नर बाबरे अब क्यों डोलत दीन तन तन संपे सुख दियो अर जेह नी के ताम कहो नानक सुन रे मना सिमरत काहे नाम सब सुख दाता राम है दूसर नाहिन को कहो नानक सुन रे मना ते सिमरत गत हो जह सिमरत गत पाइए ते पजरे ते मीत कहो नानक सुन रे मना औद जटत है नीत पांच तत को तन रचियो जान हो चतुर सुजान जेहते उपजियो नान का लीन ताहे मैं मान कट कट मैं हर जो बसे संतन कहे पुकार कहो नानक ते पज मना पौनिद उतर पार सुख दुख जेह पर से नहीं लोभ मोह अभिमान कहो नानक सुन रे मना सो मूरत भगवान उसत निंदिया नाहे जेह कंचन लोह समान कहो नानक सुन रे मना मुक्त ताहे ते जान हरक सोक जा के नहीं बैरी मीत समान कहो नानक सुन रे मना मुक्त ताहे ते जान पै काहू को देत नह नह पै मानत आन कहो नानक सुन रे मना ज्ञानी ताहे बखान जे बिखया सगली तजी लियो पेख बैराग कहो नानक सुन रे मना तेह नर माथ है पाग जेह माया मम तात जी सब ते पयो उदास कहो नानक सुन रे मना तेह कट ब्रह्म निवास जे प्राणी हो मैं तजी करता राम पछान कहो नानक वह मुकत नर एह मन साची मान 
पैनासन दुर मत हरन कल में हर को नाम निस दिन जो नानक पज सफल हो हे ते काम जे बागुन गो बिंद पजो करन सुनो हर नाम कहो नानक सुन रे मना पर है न जम के ताम जो प्राणी ममतात जय लोभ मोह अहंकार कहो नानक आपन तर और लेत उदार जो सुपना अर पेखना ऐसे जग को जान इन में कछ साचो नहीं नानक बिन भगवान निस दिन माया कारण प्राणी डोलत नीत कोटन में नानक को नारायण जह चीत जैसे जलते बुद्ध बुदा उपज बिन सनीत जग रचना तैसे रची कह नानक सुन मीत प्राणी कचूना चेत मद माया के अंद कहो नानक बिन हार भजन परतता है जम फंद जो सुख को चा है सदा सरन राम की ले है कहो नानक सुन रे मना दुर्लभ मानक दे माया कारण तावही मूर्ख लोग अजान कहो नानक बिन हार भजन बेरथा जन्म सिरान जो प्राणी निस दिन भज रूप राम ते जान हर जन हर अंतर नहीं नानक साची मान मन माया में फाद रहियो बिसर गोविंद नाम कहो नानक बिन हर भजन जीवन कौन काम प्राणी राम न चेत मद माया के अंद कहो नानक हर भजन बिन जम फंद सुख में बह संगी पे दुख में संग न कोए कहो नानक हर पज मना अंत सहाय हो जन्म जन्म पर मत फिरियो मिटियो न जम को त्रास कहो नानक हर पज मना निरपै पाव बास जतन बहुत मैं कर रहियो मिटियो न मन को मान दुर्मत सो नानक फदियो राख ले हो भगवान बाल जुआनी आर बेरद पुन तीन अवस्था जान कहो नानक हर भजन बिन बेरथा सब ही मान करणो हु तो सो ना कियो परियो लोभ कै फंद 
नानक समय राम गयो अब क्यों रोवत अंध मन माया मैं राम रहे हो निकसत नाहिन मीत नानक मूरत चितर जो छत नाहिन पीत नर चाहत कछ और और की और पई चितवत रहे उठ गार नानक फासी गल परी जतन बहुत सुख के किए दुख को कियो न को कहो नानक सुन रे मना हर पवे सो हो जगत पे खारी फिरत है सब को दाता राम कहो नानक मन सिमरते है पूरन हो भय काम झूठ है मान कहा कर जग सुपने ज्यो जान इन में कछ तेरो नहीं नानक कहे उब खान गर्व करत है देह को बिन से छिन में मीत जह प्राणी हर जस कहो नानक तेह जग जीत जह कट सिमरन राम को सोनार मुक्ता जान तेह नार हर अंतर नहीं नानक साची मान एक भगत भगवान जे प्राणी के नाहे मन जैसे सुकर स्वान नानक मानो ताहे तन स्वामी को ग्रह ज्यो सदा स्वार्थ जत नहीं नित नानक एह बिद हर पजो एक मन हो एक चित तीर्थ बत अरदान कर मन में तर गुमान नानक नेह फल जात ते जो कुंजर इस नान सिर कंपियो पग डग मगे नैन जोत ते हीन कहो नानक एह बिद पई तो न हर रस लीन निज कर देखियो जगत में को काहू को नाहे नानक थिर हर भगत है तेह रखो मन माहे जग रचना सब झूठ है जान ले हो रे नीत कह नानक थिर नार है ज्यो बालू की पीत राम गयो रावण गयो जाको बह परवार कहो नानक थिर कछ नहीं सुपने ज्यो संसार चिंता ता की, की जिए जो अनहोनी हो एहो मार्ग संसार को नानक थिर नहीं को जो जो सो बिनस है परो आज के काल नानक हर गुण गाय ले छाड़ सगल जंजाल दोहरा 
बाल छुटक्यो बंदन परे कछु ना होत उपाय कहो नानक अब ओट हर गज ज्यो हो सहाय बाल हो आ बंदन छुटे सब किच होत उपाय नानक सब किच तुमरे हाथ में तुम ही होत सहाय संग सखा सब ताज गए को नाने बहो साथ कहो नानक एह विपत में टेक एक रघुनाथ नाम रहियो साधु रहियो रहियो गुर गोबिंद कहो नानक एह जगत में किन जपो गुर मंत राम नाम और मैं गहे जाके सम नहीं को जिह सिमरत संकट मिटे दर्श तुहारो हो मुंदावनी महला पंजवा थाल बिच तिन सत संतोख विचारो अमृत नाम ठाकुर का पयो जिसका सब सदारो जे को खाव जे को पुंच तिसका हो उदारो ए हे वस्त तजी नह जाई नित नित रख और तारो तम संसार चरण लग तरिय सब नानक ब्रह्म पसारो सलोक महल्ला पंजवा तेरा कीता जा तो नाही मैनो जोग की तो मैं निर्गुण आरे को गुण नाही आपे तरस पयो तरस पया मेहरामत हो सजन मिले आ नानक नाम मिले ता जीवा तन मन थी वै हरे आ एक ओंकार सतगुर प्रसाद राग माला राग एक संग पंच बरंगन संग अलापे आठो नंदन प्रथम राग पैरो वै कर ही पंच रागनी संग उचर प्रथम पैर विबिलावली पुनिया की गाव बंगली पुन असले की की पई बारी ए पैरो की पांचो नारी पंचम हर खिसाख सुनाव बंगालम मद माधव गाव ललत बिलावल गाव ही अपनी अपनी पात अष्ट पुत्र पैरव के गाव गायन पात्र द्वितीय माल को सक आला पह पांचो था पे गोंड करी यार देव गंदारी गंदारी सिहुति उचारी तनासरी ए पांचो गाई माल राग को सक संग लाई मारु मस्त अंग मेवारा प्रबल चंड को सक उबारा खोकट औ पौरा नद गाय अष्ट माल को सक संग लाय पुन आयो हिंडोल पंच नार संग अष्ट सुत उठ तान कलोल गायन तार मिलाव ही 
तेलंगी देव करी आई बसंती संदूर सुहाई सरस अहिरी ले पार जा संग लाई पंच आर जा सुरमानंद पास कर आए मंगलन सुहाय सरस बान ओ आहे बिनोद गावे सरस बसंत कमोद अष्ट पुत्र में कहे सवारी पुन आई दीपक की बारी कछे ली पट मंजरी तोड़ी कही अलाप कामोदी और गुजरी संग दीपक के थाप कालंका कुंतल और रामा कमल कुसम चंपक के नाम गौरा और कानरा कल्याणा अष्ट पुत्र दीपक के जाना सब मिल श्री राग वै गाव है पांचो संग बरंगन लाभ है बैरारी कर नाटी तरी गवरी गाव है आशा वरी ते पाछे सिंध वी अलापी श्री राग सियो पांचो थापी सालू सारग सागरा और गोंड गंभीर अष्ट पुत्र श्री राग के गोंड कुंभ हमीर खष्टम मेघ राग वै गाव है पांचो संग बरंगन लाव सोरठ गोंड मलारी तुनी पुन गाव है आसा गुन गुनी ऊचे सुर सु हो पुन कीनी मेघ राग सियो पांचो चीनी बैरा दर गज दर के दारा जबली तर नट औ जल तारा पुन गाव है शंकर औ श्यामा मेघ राग पुत्रन के नामा खष्ट राग उन गाए संग राग नीति स सब पुत्र रागन के अठारह दस बीस खष्ट राग उन गाए संग राग नीति स सब पुत्र रागन के अठारह दस बीस वाहे गुरु जी का खालसा वाहे गुरु जी की फतेह हेलो एवरीवन कैसे हो आज थानो लेके चल ले आपा बैडमिंटन ले नगर की करते चलो और हम बताइए रेडी
ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਖਾਲਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਿੱਖ ਮਰਕਸ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਰੈਫਰੈਂਡਮ ਦੀ ਮਹਿਲ ਚਲਾਈ ਗਈ ਹੈ ਇਹਦੇ ਤਹਿਤ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਨੂੰ ਦੱਸ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਲੱਖਾਂ ਦੀ ਤਦਾਦ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੋਟਾਂ ਪਾ ਕੇ ਤੇ ਪਿੰਡੀ ਪਰਸਿੰਦਾ ਦਾ ਕਮਰੀ ਕੌਣ ਦਾ ਬੱਚਾ ਬੱਚਾ
ਮਾਰਾ ਸਭ ਜ਼ਮਾਨੇ ਦੀਆਂ ਬੁਰੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਪਰ ਬੁਰੀ ਸਮੇਂ ਦੀ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਹੋਰ ਕੀ ਜ਼ੁਲਮ ਦਾ ਮੁਸੱਲਾ ਵੇਚ ਕਰ ਖੰਜਰ ਖਰੀਦ ਐ ਬੇ ਅਕਲ ਸੂਫੀ ਮੁਸੱਲਾ ਵੇਚ ਕਰ ਖੰਜਰ ਖਰੀਦ ਐ ਬੇ ਅਕਲ ਸੂਫੀ ਕੇ ਕੋ ਹੈ ਤੇਰੀ ਫਕੀਰੀ ਸੇ ਸ਼ੈਨ ਸ਼ਾਹੀ ਵੀਰ ਜੀ ਸ਼ਹੀਦਾਂ ਦੇ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਨੂੰ 50 ਡਾਲਰ ਮੱਥਾ ਟੇਕ ਕੇ ਗਏ ਨੇ ਐ ਭਾਈ ਓਮਕਾਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਹੈ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਬੜਾ ਮਾਨ ਸਤਿਕਾਰ ਵਧਾਇਆ ਵੈ ਗੁਰੂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਚੜ੍ਹਦੀ ਕਲਾ ਦਾ ਬਲ ਬਖਸ਼ੇ ਤੁਹਾਡੀਆਂ ਹਾਜ਼ਰੀਆਂ ਸ਼ਹੀਦਾਂ ਦੇ ਦਰ ਪ੍ਰਵਾਨ ਹੋਣ ਵੈ ਗੁਰੂ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਸੁਖ ਸ਼ਾਂਤੀ ਵਰਤਾਏ ਹੋਰ ਵੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੇ ਵੀਰਾਂ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਭੈਣ ਭਰਾਵਾਂ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਗੁਰਮਤਿ ਪਿਆਰਿਆਂ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਬੜਾ ਮਾਨ ਸਤਿਕਾਰ ਕੀਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਗੁਰੂ ਕੇ ਇਤਨਾਮ ਤੋਂ ਸ਼ਹੀਦਾਂ ਦੇ ਟੁੱਟੇ ਹੋਏ ਸਾਜੇ ਤੂ ਲੜਨੇ ਤੇ ਹਸਤੀ ਸਾਜੇ ਦੁ 
द्वार द्वार पर नौबत बाजे द्वार द्वार पर नौबत बाजे सवा लाख जब तुम्हें पलीता सवा लाख जब तुम्हें पलीता तब खालसा उदय अस्त लो जीता लइया जा उठा लंगो खाल से ने लइया जा उठा गुरु गोविंद सिंह महाराज दी खाल से ने ओना ने क्या हो मेरे दूलियो सरदारो कल की धर दे सिंगो दरबार साहिब ते हमला हो गया है छाती तान के दुश्मन नु लोहे दे चने जबाओ जेड़े मदरासिए गोरखे जा होर आए ने डोगरे आए ने ओना दे धरती उते सत्थर बिछा दियो सूर वीर बहादुर ने रो में जाके संत जी महाराज संत बाबा जरनैल सिंह जी खालसा भिंडरा वाले महापुरुष लंदन विच डोयर नु मार के ते सूरमताई दा उदम सिंह अंत कर गया लक्ष्मण सिंह ने लहू दे नाल धोते जेड़े जुल्म नारायण महंत कर गया कौम लई कुर्बानी कोई करू बिरला जरनैल सिंह जो भिंडरा दा संत कर गया रहंदी दुनिया तक रहेगा याद दिलबर जेड़ा कृष्णा बेअंत सतवंत कर गया सत्कारियो खालसा जी बहुत सारे बच्चे पूछते ने ओ कहंदे अंकल आ किस दी तस्वीर बनाई है ए है पापी अरुण कुमार वैद्या जिसने फौज नु हुक्म देके अकाल तख्त दरबार साहिब ते अटैक करवाया सी हजार हा लोग गुरु अर्जन देव साहिब दा शहीदी जोड मेला मनाण वास्ते आए इस पापी ने फौजी नु हुक्म फौजियां नु हुक्म दित्ता कुलदीप बराल उस फौज दी अगवाई कर रिया सी लेको हुक्म इस पापी ने सुनाया सी जदो इने अन्ने बात शब्द कीता ते शब्द करके जुर्म करके रिटायरमेंट लेके पुणे जा बसया ये हम सुख जिंदगी सुख दी जिंदगी भोगांगे लेकिन गुरु के ओ दो नाम ने बब्बर शेर भाई हरजिंदर सिंह जी जिंदा एदा पिंड है गदरी जंडियारे गुरु दे लागे ते जेड़ा दूजा वीर है जिन्नू गुलवकड़ी पाई है ओ है भाई सुखदेव सिंह सुखा गंगा नगर तो दोनों भ्रावा ने सलाह कीती कि उस आर्मी दे बड्डे कमांडर ने अरुण कुमार मेहंदिया ने जिसने हुक्म सुना के दरबार साहिब ते फौज चाढ़ी है टैंक चाढ़े है उस पापी नु लोहे दे चने जमाए जान इस नु चने चबाण वास्ते लाल तमाकन वर्गिया नु अर्जुन वर्गिया नु सज्जन कुमार वर्गिया नु सूर वीर बहादुर ने सोधे लौंदिया लौंदिया जा पूने ठहरे ओथे कमरा किराए ते लिया इस भाल विच के जेड़े पापी ने हुक्म सुना के पंजाबियां दे खून दी होली खेडी है याद रखना जेड़ी सिख कौम है जे कोई एदे उते जुल्म तशद्दद ते अत्याचार करेगा ओदो बैसाखी सन 1919 ईसवी दा दिन से जदो जनरल डवायर दे हुक्म नाल जा पार, 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 पार,
जुलमदा शीतला
guys and welcome back to my channel today is my convocation for my program Yay! i know you guys are wondering ah, that's so fast i thought she's doing like a two-year program or a three-year program but actually actually i changed my course sometime last year it was a one-year program the one-year postgraduate certificate and i did that for like two semesters and the program was very enjoyable for me what i'm going for now is um the convocation for the program that i just finished and yeah so i'm preparing i'm going with my mom and my two sisters i'm so happy that my mom is here so she can see me graduate i'm going to turn to at the meridian hall so that's where the convocation is taking place and i'm about to do my makeup so i just wanted to um do this intro before I focus and do my makeup. So I'm going to take you guys along with me. Hopefully, I've deleted some, <laughs> so I've cleared up my space and deleted some memory, so I'll be able to film better. And I just did my skincare routine so that my face should be, because it's winter. I don't know if you guys know, but during winter, the weather is so dry. Like it's like Hamasan season. It's as dry as Hamasan season. So you have to like really moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. And now I applied like my foundation, so it's looking like you no. Know, you can still see the glow from under. So they always say use setting spray at every step of your makeup. I'm not doing so much, just foundation, eyeliner, and that's it. I bought this uh, lash coiler yesterday. It's like the most useless thing I've bought since. These are my lashes before using it. So let's try. Nothing. Totally useless. <laughs> so we're heading to the we're heading to the venue. <laughs> and Olachi. And this is me. So we're heading to go take our gown and get seated for the ceremony. This is currently 2 2 p.m. 2:10. I have our names written on the on the jackets, on the ropes. So they just need your name. Trying to drop off our coats, the coat check. Oh, 
the faculty on the platform to please rise and be recognized. Let's give them a big hand. Faculty and staff and staff. Commitment to lifelong learning can take you in many new directions. I know it wasn't easy, but with the post-secondary education under your belt, the opportunities are endless. Your skills and expertise are in high demand. And I know you'll leave this great institution with a world of opportunities ahead of you. I want you to pause for a moment. Look around. Take all this in. I want you to feel proud. To Student Life at Seneca. They are honored to represent all of you here today. When I found out I was chosen as a valedictorian, I couldn't believe it. I'm not sure. It wasn't Chuck. I just felt rewarded for all the hard work. And saving the moment. Congratulations on celebration. Congratulations, everyone. After all the sleepless nights, we are finally done and we are ready. I'm proud of you all. Maybe I want to thank everybody. Especially my family. High five on my back. My wife. My husband. My spouse. My partner. And also my girlfriend. Thank you to my classmates. All the faculty. And my friends. Without them, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. Congratulations, we did it. Let's go out and celebrate. Who else are you here? Seneca. Akashek Chandri. All going on stage. Mohammed Mohammed Selim Honors. Ona Okengu, high honors. Ogona Okengu. Cyprian Onu Wosefi honors. We made it. We made it. Done. And heading out to meet our family. Trying to get a good picture. Yes. And the weather is so beautiful. I'm going to stay there. But it's freezing. It's freezing. I'm trying to wear my coat on top of my regalia. Mama, <laughs> <My> Teddy. I've got 
Hey guys, so um, I just finished my last class and I'm going to head to Starbucks because um, I'm starving and then I'll see if I can eat like actual food at home. It is currently December 9th, 2020. It is finals week. I did everything in my power to help me out this school year. I really need a mental health break right now. <laughs> this is the first vlog of the spring semester of 2021, so that's exciting. It is the first back to school video here on my channel ever. It is Monday, April 19th. It is finals week. Ooh. But now I have to go in person. I this week has been like such a long roller coaster for me. Like the entire eight floors of the library is completely full. It's 2022, brand new year, brand new semester. Finals week is over. My plan was to edit a little bit each day, but I'm so tired, I'm ready for the semester to be over. So my plan was to stay another two years. I am kind of excited to go back and like learn new things because I'm actually taking classes that I like now. Wow, I cannot believe it. I'm a senior in college now. Today is my last first day of college because I finished the semester. I'm graduating in five months. All right, it's showtime. Here we go. Ah, we did it. Welcome to my last finals week vlog and my last college vlog. I finished. I'm done. I just have one final left. Okay, I am done with undergrad.
Today is my college graduation day. It's been six years and now I'm gonna graduate. My first semester was fall 2018 and now it is spring 2024. Welcome to the graduation vlog. It is currently 8 a.m. and I'm about to go to the kitchen, get everything ready, have everything packed and ready to go. I'm excited to vlog this day and I've dreamed about this day for so long. I'm so excited to vlog this. This is such a monumental moment. I can't wait to graduate, let's go. My sister made me these graduation pancakes. graduate. I have to go in and scan my tickets and make sure that everything's good. They said to be there like around an hour early. The commencement is at 10 so I'm gonna head out. I can be there by 9. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Let's walk across the stage and graduate.
sitting here with my iced coffee. I had a whole night's sleep. So now I have time to sit down and kind of just talk to you guys. I didn't want to just end my graduation vlog on just like, I'm back home from graduation. We just had dinner and that's it. Like I wanted it to be a little bit more reflective towards the end. In that moment when I was turning the tassels and I have it recorded on my Instagram story, I couldn't stop thinking about kindergarten. And I said this to my parents because I was like, wow, like I cannot imagine life without school. Like I was literally five years old when I first got into kindergarten and I don't have any memories before that. How am I gonna live my life without school? Two years into college, I started this channel. So the majority of my college career is documented on here. Every single semester, like the car rides and the homework and the sleepless nights, all the things that I've documented. It's so sad because now I have to make like its own independent playlist, college vlogs, and just like close that chapter and have that there. It seems so surreal and crazy. But yes, now I really hope that I have have a nice and decent schedule that is gonna keep me accountable because it's gonna be so easy now to be lazy and to not do anything. I have the privilege of staying home and focusing on this social media thing and my acting. So I can't just like take advantage of that and just stay home and do nothing or like kind of do something and then just like saying I'm doing it. But like, I wanna put in that effort. I wanna be responsible. I'm really trying to focus on that, especially now I have so much time and if i can't do anything on monday i can move it to wednesday i'm not bound by the class times anymore so it sounds crazy to even say that if i have to like send an email or something or I have to dedicate time to a video i can do that and schedule that within my time frame and i don't have to worry about no i can't do that because i have class at that time that's not confining me anymore which is crazy so now i really have to be responsible and understand prioritizing tasks prioritizing tasks is gonna be a big issue for me. It's been a big issue for me since like middle school. I'm not very good at it. I am a very organized person as you all know, but I'm not a very good time management person, which is so weird. I made a whole video about it and those things have helped me, but you know, I waver in and out. Like it's not perfect every day and I'm getting better. It was one of my new year's resolutions to get better time management. And the first quarter of the year is done. So trying to check in and be like, okay, are you getting better at your time management? What's going on right now are you actually putting in the effort that you need to put in i'm really focusing on trying to be like okay don't fall in this pit of laziness now i have some sort of qualification i have a little bachelor's degree i'm so excited i started at a community college and i did that from like 2018 to like 2020. That's when I actually started documenting here. I did that, I finished, I graduated in the spring with my associates and I didn't have a ceremony until December. During that time, I was a transfer student and I had like the first few vlogs of me starting in this university. It's just like crazy to think that I was still like on Zoom online doing that. The first like in-person semester was fall 2021 and now it's spring 2024 and it's been almost three years. And here I am, graduated, I will still keep posting shorts it seems like that's like the most sustainable for me right now as i focus on like what is gonna be my long form content and how is it gonna look like but yeah now i'm an adult making adult decisions if i want to do this i can do this and we'll see where my career goes doesn't mean i won't be posting any more vlogs i will be the vlogs are not over the college vlogs are but general vlogs are not over i will be posting more vlogs yeah i just wanted to end this video in a sort of reflective way and i'm so excited for this new chapter thank you so much for watching this video i hope you really enjoyed it please like this video because that's how you let me know subscribe for more videos like these and hit the little bell notification right next to the subscribe button so that you get notified every single time that i post and i will see you guys next time bye